So boys, 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 welcome back. I know, I know it has been a hot minute since we have uploaded a video. I think it's been like 10 days. You have been reminding me in the comments. Look, I know, look, obviously work has been absolutely flat out. But from this week going forward, I'm going to be going probably more likely full time into making content. If you don't know, guys, I do stream live over on Twitch, like sort of five to six days a week. I also have two other YouTube channels. So if you want to go and check any of our content out, it would be greatly, greatly appreciated. But like I said, with me going full time into making more content, I'm going to have a lot more time for making videos. I'm still going to stick with a video every other day. I feel like if I rush the Dortmund videos, I feel like the quality just isn't there. I prefer making like longer videos like every other day and then you have a lot more to watch. But with regards to the team, look, the team hasn't really changed that much. I haven't really done a lot of the team. Formation wise, I'm just kind of tinkering around a wee bit here and there. But like, like I said, the only thing that I really overly wanted to change was Gao Karras. I think just having him as a present forward, somebody who just chases the ball around all the time, is honestly wasting a player who is absolutely fucking fantastic. Like the dude's only 26 years old. He's got yes, he does have the natural fitness and stamina to be able to do a present forward. But I kind of just want to keep him up there. Him and Makoko, I think, as goal scoring threats going to be absolutely phenomenal and the only other thing i've changed is i've pushed the two wing backs up a little bit and i've made dame monday and an asho uh liberos on defense all they're gonna do if you have a libero on support they end up like fucking up here somewhere all i want these ones to do is just push up into here so basically we have two people sitting in here euro is we're basically just gonna make a triangle out of players for people to pass the ball around i just i feel like previously the psg game was a big one we've seen that we kind of got pulled apart a wee bit in the psg match <sighs> It, it, it hurt my soul a little bit the PSG game especially look getting beat 1-0 in the second leg I'm happy enough for that look it's fucking PSG I mean they have Kylian Mbappe and a bunch of other fantastic players but the other the, the first leg we just we seen a lot of weaknesses granted I do have to understand you have to remember we do have a very 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 young team like our team is extremely young like if you look through our team right now Seaman 20 Anasio is like what 23 Euro 18, sorry, 19. Now, Diamande, 21. Nets, 21. Baku is a little bit older, probably 27. 27, still pretty fucking young. Quadero, only 18. Darvuch is usually in here, but he's, uh, I think he is currently, yeah, he's not, he's not fit. Darvuch is usually in here, 18 years old. Uzkan, 19 years old. Makoku is still very, very young at 20 years old. And of course, Gao Karras is 26. So like nobody in our team, like we are, a lot of our players still need, a, I think, a season or another season after that to basically develop, especially the like of Khan and stuff. Like They're phenomenal now, but like what are they going to be like in a couple of years? And also I love the fact that we've got a very, very heavily German built team. Like if we look through our team, Siemens German, our three defenders, not really too much. Nets, Baku, both German. Quadrago's German. Darvuch is German. Um, Khan is German, Makoko is German, so we've basically kept that whole German theme, but busy. I think we've brought in the right type of players. Yes, we spent a wee bit on Gao Karras and a wee bit on Euro, like 80 million, but it is what it is. Look, sometimes you have to spend money for players that have buyer clauses, and force you can't get around that because the club just refuses. If the computer was to buy Gao Karras, probably cost him 45, 50 million. Us, we have to pay like 80 million because, I don't know, the computer hates us, but we do have two big big games today which is absolutely fantastic the first game is going to be against Schalke if we win the game today against Schalke we win the league so that'll be absolutely fantastic that'll be like three years back to back we've won the league but then our next match after that we play Bayer Leverkusen this is in the semi-final of the cup so perhaps if we can win today we win the league if we can beat Bayer we get into the final of the cup which would be absolutely fantastic perhaps we'll jump over Play the Schalke game first, and then I'll show you all the stats and shit and all in between, and then we'll jump over in the Leverkusen game. But boys, like I said, this is a big game today. If we can capture the league, with like four or five games still to play, that would be absolutely fantastic. But like I said, one thing I do want to jump in before we start playing this is everybody, like I do greatly appreciate all the support on the videos. Like I said, and a lot of I love that you're asking like when's the next video because like you are interested in the save as much as I am. Look, I'm really really enjoying this. Like I said, and with me going full time in the pushing content it's going to be a little bit easier for me. I'm going to have a lot more time to basically make videos and stuff as well because these videos do take a fucking long time because I have to play privacy all the games in between. I know I could simulate the games, but I don't like to do it. I like to watch and see how we're playing. But like I said, I guess I would be greatly appreciated. Like if you do want to go and check out any of our content, I have two other YouTube channels. They're both like heavily story mode games. One's big open world games like Red Dead Redemption, Fallout, Ghost of Shaman, stuff like that. And then the other channel is smaller sort of games. Things like 
um busy at the telltale walking dead games i'm playing through god of war ragnarok i play all those games on stream and then just split them up in the two channels we've got a lot of shorts and stuff over there as well and like i said we stream anywhere from like five to six days a week on twitch so if you want to come over hang out have a good laugh and joke around we've got a really good community of people over there always having a good time here's one that i would like to play a lot more which is keenan you did just every time i play him fucking scores he scored in the last match as well and i kind of feel bad for him because we have such a good midfield like our midfield three is quadrago darvuch and can and i'm like where the fuck do i play king in your days even though he plays so well but the other three are playing well as well the only thing i can think of is if we end up like if we lost a striker touch wood if we lost say we lost guy care as the real madrid or some shit like that right i would push can up beside makoku and then just play um your D's in behind that's just like i said i'm always thinking hypotheticals in case i was to lose a player because let's be honest if real madrid or like somebody like that comes knocking we can't really overly stop our players i think um gal Karras also has a buy clause of like 85 million or something in the rounder so like no I mean i can't overly stop him from going but this is a huge step for us like if we can just keep edge the champs i'm actually i'm not gonna lie i'm still very very pissed off what happened in the Champions League? Look, I know it's PSG, but like us getting slapped in the first game absolutely messed up our whole next one. Because like, if, say we went into that game, we drew the first match, right? Say we drew like 2 each or something, right? Then we go into the next game 2 each, And then even if we only get beat 1-0, we could beat 3-2 by PSG. But we get slapped 5-1. And <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I know I shouldn't be barred because we've got a really, really young team and this will come with time. But I'm, <sighs> I'm still annoyed. I'm still annoyed. I'm happy, especially beating the rivals. I'm, look, I'm happy with the team. We, we're doing pretty well. So I'm actually going to make a few changes. We haven't really had a lot of replays and stuff. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to more like bring Gao Karras off because he's not playing great. Also, this gives Full Krug a wee bit of a chance. Um, Khan's not playing great. I'm also going to bring Marco Reese on. The one thing, Marco Reese, I don't know if I showed you this, previously. he's retiring at the end of the season. So I've been trying to give him a few games. As you can see, he's a 22 off the bench. I'm not going to start him in front of Khan. I think Khan's done very, very well. So I'm trying to give Reese a, a few games and get him a wee bit of football just before the end of the season. What are we looking like? 6.6 .6 euros, not playing absolutely fantastic. I'm going to bring um, Samson Beidou. Like I said, this previously, if I knew about Beidou, Beidou, Beidou is a player I didn't know about. So if I knew about him, like how much would we pay for him? 17 million. If I knew he was this good, he can also play with both feet and he's absolutely fantastic. I wouldn't, I'm not going to lie. I probably wouldn't have bought Euro. I'd probably just bought him for 17 million. And then our back line would have been Anasio, him and Diamande. But no, I mean, Euro is still a fantastic player to have. His potential is fantastic, but so is Beidou's. Like he's five star. So I'm like, oh, I don't know. There has been a few people sniffing around Euro. Chelsea were like in and around there looking and he does have a price tag of like 80 million, 80 to 100 million. So I'm like, if somebody came in and did offer like 90 to 100 million, would I sell him? I don't know. I, honestly, I think I probably would. I think, honestly, I think Beidou is a wee bit more sort of well-rounded, but he is a very, very good football. He's got a good first touch. His dribbling's getting a lot better. Heading's really, really good. Mental stats are very, very good. Like, I'm happy to keep him. But if somebody came in and offered 90 to 100 million and I just play Beidou, but then we also have to look at this. I, we don't need the money. I think currently, the minute if I was to go into the scouting thing, we still have 84 million left and we have nearly half a million in wages because we just haven't been banned, people because we haven't needed to. I think we've bought the right people at the right time and a team. I'm very, very happy with how the team's looking right now. Like I said, they're very young. They're a little inexperienced, some of them, but that will come in time. If this is how well we can do now a couple of seasons in with a young team, what's it going to be like in a couple of years? It's like my goal probably is to win the Champions League because it is the one trophy that we haven't won yet. And I do want to get it in the bag. But like I said, I'm also very, very happy. Riddell Baku is another one that I've been super, super happy with. When I looked at him, uh, we weren't even planning on playing him back Baku was going to be end up being our backup then Felix got that big injury I think he was out for like four or five months I think he got a bad injury and I had to put Baku in and he's been phenomenal since I started playing him so like it sometimes those wee the wee small transfers the ones you weren't expecting are the ones that usually end up being really really good so the match ended up winning winning one nil we ended up winning one nil the match ended one nil <laughs> it's probably like I said if we won this we won the league look not, not, not an absolutely sterling performance, but sometimes you just got to dig in and get those 1-0s. That's how you win, champ. That's how you win leagues. By just grinding out some of the results. Like, you can't bang every team 4, 5, 6 nil. Sometimes, sometimes you got to play an okay game and win 1-0. Like I said, the big one 
is winning the league. Like I said, the whole point of this save was us to stop Bayern Munich's reign of terror. But obviously, we've done that. This is our third year in a row now. We've won the league. But the big thing is going to be now knuckling down and starting the Champions League. Like, I want to win the Champions League. Yeah, even if we were to get to, like, a semi-final or a final of the Champions League, I'd be super, super happy because we've built a team that's young, very German-based. We also have a lot of really, really good young players. But obviously, at the end of the videos and at the end of the seasons, I'll always try and show you all the youth players that we have. The wee guy that we brought in from PSG, Yuan Raldan, is one that I'm always going to be keeping an eye on because he's one I think he could be absolutely fucking phenomenal. Like, he's only 16 years old. He's not ready to come up into the full team yet. But here's the thing you also have to remember. If I sell Adeyemi this summer and then probably Marco Reese is retiring, I may need to bring him up into the first team because it's just like squad depth. But I don't know. Here's the thing. We already have him sitting here. I don't want to buy another player. And then we're like, okay, he's going to last a couple of seasons. And then we sell him. And then we play Raul Dan. I would rather just bring Raul Dan up because his mental stats is... Here's one of the things. When you have young players, the thing that kind of lets him down is physical stats. Probably his aren't phenomenal, but he's not going to be starting every game. So don't worry. But their mental stats is usually the thing that really, really holds them down. But his 14 anticipation, 15 composure, 14 decision, 19 determination, 16 flair, 17 teamwork. Technique's good. But like I said, he's going to be one of those players we bring on at like 70 minutes when we're like 2 or 3 nil up. Or we play him in like a wee cup game against like a small team and to see how he gets on. But it's because his mental stats are so good... I think he'll kind of be okay. Also, he's German, which is absolutely fantastic. We did have to pay like 7 million for him. Actually, from Bayern. What am I talking about? Not from PSG. Um, we bought him from Bayern. Honestly, the big surprise was we were actually able to get him away from Bayern Munich, which is a big thing. But we are now the biggest team in Germany. And that's fantastic because now we can attract a lot more young players. But he's one I definitely, definitely want to keep an eye on. Previously, the rest of the youth team, we've got a couple of good players in there. We've got Giorgio Diana. He's one, look... I think he'd probably be better as a defensive midfielder. I just, I don't feel his heading and his jumping reach are that great. But once again, he's only 16 German and he's only playing in a star and a half. So it's one that we keep an eye on. Then Dan Mendes, the wee fullback. Once again, only 15. I don't think he'd be a really, really good fullback. Fullbacks, they kind of need to have a wee bit of blister and pace. Like, I'm not going to lie. Eight acceleration and 11 pace. But this could go up with time. Once again, he's only 15 years old. And probably... We got him for absolutely nothing because he came through the youth team. These are all ones that we need to keep an eye on. Then Jean Muller, he's one. Got a wee bit more pace. Once again, he's also German. One we brought through the youth system, so it costs absolutely nothing. He's got good flair, but I'm hoping with time and those mental stats will start to go up. But like I said, these are all young kids that we can keep a wee eye on. And then with regards to the team, like I said, I'm super, super happy, everybody. I don't think there's anybody in the team I would be like, oh, we need to change this position. I'm actually very, very happy. I think, like I said, with having a... We do have a few experienced players. Anasio and Baku, I mean, are a wee bit older. Garo Karras is a wee bit older. And then, of course, at some point, I would love to still bring in I think of it savage. Look, I know, but here's the thing we have to understand. Khan is only 18 years old. I can't expect him to help us win a Champions League. It's players like Milinkovic Savic. Milinkovic Savic, by the time we get him, he's going to be like, what, 31, pushing 32, but he has that 20 natural fitness and 17 stamina. So by the time we get him, Khan will have basically been like 19. I can push him in for the big game, say the, the big massive games in the Champions League. I play Milinkovic Savage, and then Khan plays like the smaller games in the league and stuff. Milinkovic, look, you know my love for Savage and how good he is. He's a world-class midfielder, and sometimes you need world-class midfielder help you push in the Champions League so he'll be one that I do want to bring in because you can get him on a free I think this season so if I was to bring him in like I said play him in the big games play Khan in the small games because like youth is fantastic but it is hard to win the Champions League with just a bunch of youth players so like I said boys with regards to the league that is us two years in a row I don't know why I kept saying three years in a row look you know what I meant <laughs> this is our second year in a row where we've been won the league and we've won the league by a massive amount like, what's that, 16 points? We played 30 games, probably still to play the rest of the league games. I'll show you all that. Then we have 27 wins, two draws, and we've only lost one game in the league all season. That was the Baron 1-0. I'm happy with that. Probably Makoku in there. He's had a couple of wee niggles, so he hasn't played, like, pretty much every game. But I think by the end of the season, Makoku could end up being the top goal scorer. Probably Reina away to Chelsea now. We can't worry about that. But we have Baku and Nets in there for average reigns. We've got Baku and Nets in there for assists. Siemens in there for clean sheets. He's only one behind Neuer, and you know how good Neuer is. Then player of the matches, Riddell Baku is in there. Like I said, Baku has probably been one of our best buys. Like, how much did we pay for him? 
8 fucking million. 8 million. This has probably been our best buy so far for 8 million. It's been absolutely wild. There was another player that I was looking at ages ago and then he went to Barcelona. I don't know if I showed you this. So I was keeping tabs on this little striker, like attacking midfielder for ages. And then I didn't buy him in like January. And then Barcelona swooped in and took him and I was absolutely raging. Which is this young guy, uh, Simeth Kalakashai? I don't know how the fuck to pronounce his name. Anyway, he was one I was keeping an eye on. And look how much they bought him for. 19 million. At the time, I can't remember who was he playing for. He's playing for Besiktas. I think he's only valued at about 18, but I think it was like 15 to 20 million in the round there. And he was one I was keeping an eye on. I didn't busy put in for him in January. I fucking should have because he would have been so good. Like if we would have bought him for 19 million, I probably wouldn't have spent the 80 million on Garo Karras. And like I said, this is, I always like to give you like a wee bit of like backstory about like the players that I'm thinking about ban. He was the one I was thinking about ban. Garo Karras was probably always one I did want to bring in. But if I would have got him and look how good he is now, I probably wouldn't have needed to spend 80 million. But like I said, this is just wee things. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say Garo Karras and your are mistakes. They're very, very good players that will help our team over the next like five, six, seven, eight years. But just we spent a lot of money that we we'll probably already didn't need to spend. But he's one that kind of hurt a little bit because I wanted him pretty bad. And then when he, I seen he went to Barcelona, I was like, come on. And at the time, we didn't have the money, so I couldn't put in for him. Otherwise, he he probably would have been one that would have been our starter beside Makoku. So I also thought this was pretty funny. It said that now we have moved up in the second place with regards to like titles won. Look how many titles Byron have won compared to everybody else. Like we were at what? Seven? The closest team is at nine and Byron's on 33. I would love to try and break this, but somehow I don't think this save is going to go on for another, uh, maybe what, 24 seasons? <laughs> so boys, that takes us over privacy to the Leverkusen game. Like I said, the only thing that's going to change is Darvuch is coming back in for IUDs because privacy he's fit now again. I, think he was, I can't remember if he was on fit or he was suspended. I think he was suspended. This is something I'm super happy with. Darvuch and Asan Quadrago in the middle of the park. Two big, strong, physical players. Absolutely fantastic. Darvuch, I'm still working on his weaker foot in, tra in the individual training. Privacy, us capturing him for like, how much did we get him for? Fucking 28 million for a player that's probably going to end up worth him anywhere from like 70, 80, 90 to 100 million. Us getting him for 28 is an absolute steal. But boys, we win this game today that puts us in the cup final and like i said i think we do have a very very good mix of like youth and experience like i said i know a lot of our young players like like and An An not an old player like he's fucking early 20s but he's played a lot of games which is absolutely fantastic and like i said the champions league next season is going to be a huge thing for us like i said we've won the league we've shown that we're very very capable in the german league i'm over here just talking about how we might sell euro because of like just to play Beidou and then he goes and gives away a penalty in the fucking second minute <sighs> this is not a good start this is not a good start boys I was hoping Seaman would have saved that he went the right way but probably we can't rely isn't Top Zoba a fucking centre back he's hitting their penalties really hold on I could have swore Top Zoba is a centre back is he not he is a centre back he is very very good though he is very very good what's his penalty taken 15, 15, okay, okay, I can't even be mad at that, he's got 15 penalty taken for a fucking center back, he is brilliant. Also, round of applause to Xavi Alonso, I think it's fair to say, done absolutely fantastic with the team that he's had. Like, obviously, Bear have a very, very good team, but I think that's the first time they've ever won the German league, right? And Xavi Alonso's done it his first season, he's taken that team that was a wee bit kind of all over the place and he's taken people like Frimpong and pushed him up the park yes he still plays a right back he technically is more of a, like a right winger than a right back for them he starts off at right back but he's not technically a right back and he's just turned him into an absolute machine because the amount of people that are after Frimpong right now he's offside um is amazing like he's, he's turned that team around he's taken people like Xhaka who came from Arsenal who think Xhaka left on a free didn't he and then he swooped him up hold on I, I honestly thought Gao Karras was offside. Was he not? He it, he still looks offside. Look, I'm not I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. Then he's taking like people like Grimaldo and stuff. He's built a very very good team. Probably Florian Verts. He's turned into him. I think the only problem Florian Verts ever had is injuries. Like his injuries just were fucking horrendous. But now he's he's gonna be. With regards to like attacking midfielders for Germany, 
You have Jamal Musiala and Florian Verts. Imagine playing them in behind a striker. Imagine having them two in behind you, passing you a bunch of balls. Hold on. Did we just get Diamande injured? We did. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just going to bring him off. I'm not going to risk Diamande. I know this is a terrible game to bring him off, but I don't want to risk him getting injured for the rest of the season because that, you know, that's what happens to us. But yeah, Xavi Lanzo, fucking round of applause, bro. I'm, and also, I'm glad he's staying. Like, probably he could have taken the Liverpool job because probably it probably more like if he would have won the league, Liverpool would have been like, yes, we would have offered him a job. I, I'm glad he's staying. Like, I really, really am glad he's staying. I think he's built something fantastic. Also, the players are probably super happy he's staying because let's be honest, if Xavi Lanzo left that team, there would have been a fire sale. Like, f- people like Fring Pong and Verse and stuff would have ended up going to bigger teams in the summer. Like, and I'm glad, because I think a lot of players will stay just because of how good Xavi Lanzo has been to them. Like, he showed those players a lot of faith. And it has been the other way around, too. Like, the players have showed Xavi Lanzo a lot of faith, because it's his first big job, and he's done fucking fantastic. I know we're off on a wee bit of a tangent, but I just I think he's done very... I'm happy to see Xavi Lanzo. I love Xavi Lanzo as a player, even though he played for Liverpool, and I'm a Man United supporter. Like, you can't deny the dude is fucking phenomenal. Like, he really was... He wasn't a really, really silky player. Like, he wasn't showboating and stuff. He just did the fundamentals so fucking well. That's why he played in, like, like that holding midfielder role, because he was smart as a footballer. I watched that, and then I was like, it's okay. Our defenders tracked him. Like, our defender was a wee bit slow to, like, cover back to try and get him. Who was it? Four, Anasio. And then he kind of caught up the ground. And when he was here, I was like, fine. He's going to block. It's going to go out for a corner. Yo, we would not be so lucky for it to go out for a fucking corner. And then we literally get Luka Nets injured straight away. My, right, so my only thing, when I've been looking at this formation, I'm super, super happy with this. My only, my only gripe here is, probably Anasio and Diamande will be the, uh, the barrels to push up a little bit. The only thing I might change is this. I might put him as a Roman playmaker, and I may move Khan back a little bit, because I feel like this gap in between is going to be something that we, I think, we're going to get exploited quite a lot, and I don't want to see this happen. Obviously, I'd like the player from midfield. So this is something I may even play him as like a deep playing playmaker on support and just have him sit. Is he going to play the way um, Frankie Dion plays? Asan is big, strong, physical. He's good at holding onto the ball. Because like I said, this big hole here, I think this is going to be a problem. Probably against smaller teams in Germany, I don't think this is going to be an issue. So this is something that I may kind of switch to and just kind of see how we're going because I feel like these are getting in between our midfield and our defense a little bit. And I kind of want to shut that down a little bit. Also, I've seen a few people comment on privacy. Look, we all play the game differently, and that's one thing I love about Football Manager. Like, the diversity in how you can play is unreal. I've seen a few people were like, why don't you just play Gao Karras as, like, a target forward or something like that? Gao Karras is a good player, but I just I don't think he's a target forward. Like, he's just... Look, he's got 12 heading, and he's basically got 13 jump on reach. Yes, he's big, strong, physical, but he can't head the ball. And target forwards need to be able to head the ball. And I think, honestly, playing him as a target forward be a wee bit of a waste but like i said with regards to the formation i think uh, i think this is just a super solid midfield like we have this is a fucking really really good young midfield that's going to be around for a long time and i want to play with, out from the back busy if you look this way right i always want to try and have like triangles on how we play so Nashio can play to inning and quadrago so these ones have a triangle it's basically probably more like a square because they can play to diverge so basically you have this square here over here has this square here and then he can play it back he can play it here he can play it forward perhaps even when we get further up the park but by the time we progress the ball up the park the gao Karras and makoku these two have pushed up into like here so basically once again and these ones have pushed up so we basically end up with the square up here too so i'm kind of just I, d- I did like the formation being like this like i really really did but like i said this big hole in behind because the ball just kept coming over the top i noticed this like i said when we were playing psg the ball kept coming over the top and then being pushed out wide and we just weren't fast enough to recover so i think i'm just gonna busy gonna start playing the team a wee bit like this and just have like quadrago in as like that sort of frankie de Jong type player and then two players in darvich and uzkan who can get up and down the park and are very very physical uzkan i keep calling up uzkan i don't know why uzan Uz- uzun and Khan, we're just going to call him Khan. I agreed on calling him Khan the last time, and I've changed it. One, 
6 1, look, not as physical as the likes of Hassan and Darvuch, but still, I mean, his strength's going up a wee bit. He's still 6 1, can play with both feet, so I'm very, very happy to have him in the park. I feel like this is a wee bit more structurally sound than just having this big gap in here because previously I want to score goals, but I also don't want this leaking a ton of goals, and I feel like that's what we're done. Like I said, the PSG game, look. Playing PSG, the match can you get off the perfect tactic and still end up getting absolutely fucking smashed. But like, I want to control possession and I want us to have a wee bit more of the football and play a wee bit smarter. And I feel like this is a good formation for us to play. I'm not gonna lie, I watched the sand run in the box. It was like, please just fucking smash this. I'm hoping he's not hurt because he's down holding his leg. Also, Khan has been hitting our penalties and doing fucking fantastic. I shouldn't even have said anything because I'm probably going to scud myself. Come on, big man, you got this. I don't think he's missed a penalty. Probably Gao Carras was hitting the penalties and then he kept missing loads. So I changed our penalty take over to Khan, who's fan. I think he's got like 14 or 15 penalty taken. He just seems a lot more confident hitting the penalties and he doesn't miss, which is the big thing. Yeah, his penalty taken is like 15 and he's got 14 finishing. So he's perfect to basically hit it. He's going to be, he is developed so well also the other great thing is about us playing asan as a deep lane playmaker probably i want to bring him off he's tired and he's not doing absolutely fantastic but it means i can do this because people like julian brandt who are very very good on the ball experienced and play with both feet he is absolutely perfect to be able to play probably that sort of frankie de Jong type position so this is another good thing if i put them back brandt and asan can kind of interchange and play that same position because that's the main thing like i said if we want to do well in all competitions We'll need a lot of cover in a lot of positions. Also, the deep lane playmaker role would also be another one absolutely fantastic for the likes of Milinkovic Savic, who are just so good on the ball and so confident on the ball, but he's big, strong, physical, got a lot of fitness. So he would be one that would be absolutely perfect to play there. So it could be an R1 where we could basically play him there, and then Khan can basically, like I said, play the smaller games. And then I would just push Asan and Darvuch into the basically the two center midfielders. So we would have three big, strong, physical players. And then even if Khan's playing too, like he's still 6-1. He's not as strong as like the other players, but he's still very, very good in the ball. I'm excited for like what we can do with this team. I do want to bring Milinkovic Savage in at some point. Look, he's going to be on a free. So it's going to be one of those ones. Look, we're not paying 80, 90 million for him or something. So like, I'm not like messing the team around because I'm paying big money for a player that we don't need. We're going to get him on the free. And wages wise, yeah, he's probably going to be on like 250,000, but we have a shit ton of money. And that's the... A fantastic position to be in but i want him in the team so bad boys i really do and they go and score in the fucking 87th minute as soon as he hit that i knew it was going in a good header out by us but just like no one closed them down just like nobody closed them down at all i was hoping we like we only needed to go another fucking like six minutes bound to be sent it's not a penalty he's 100 percent being sent off for that right it's not a penalty like it was it was fucking miles outside the box i don't know why we're even looking at this Hold on. Didn't he i'm gonna need to watch that back but wasn't that a tackle wasn't the tackle like here somewhere well, look i'm not complaining who's can i keep calling him who's can every fucking time can please please just bang this in it's amazing that you can rely on a fucking 19-year-old to win you games. I'm not going to lie, boys. When they scored at the end there, in the 87th minute, I was sweating a little bit. But like I said, I think, right, we conceded two goals reasonably early. And like I said, once again, it was the ball over the top and in and out wide. I feel like if we play how we're playing with probably one person just sitting in front of the defense, it is very, very good. The one thing I, I have noticed, where is Euro? I'm going to need to work on his passing because if he's going to be the central defender on defense, I need him to be able to pass the ball. He's reasonably good with both feet, so I'm not going to worry about that too much. But his passing and his vision needs to go up a little bit because I have watched one of the goals 
was his fault because he just he played a really really sloppy ball over to Prince and Ng and he just couldn't get on it. So this one thing I'm gonna have to work on is basically his passing because I do want him Prezi to be our center back. If we end up losing him Prezi we can play Beidou who's passing once again is also gonna need a wee bit of work because he's only got 11 passing 13 vision but something we can work on because he does have five star potential. I think defensive wise he's very very good physically absolute fucking monster but like passing wise I think that's gonna be the things I'm gonna work on with Euro and Beidou it's gonna be their passing. Boys I think that's gonna be a fantastic spot to stop off for today's video. Like I said we won the first game Obviously, won ourselves the league. That's two years back to back, which is absolutely fantastic. And now beating Leverkusen, just about like we have to. The like, can has to probably obviously pull us through fucking games. Now he's only nineteen, but like probably beating Leverkusen, which means we're now into the final cup. I don't know who we're gonna play. Probably it's gonna be in the next episode. Like I said, I'm gonna try and put out as many videos as I can. The, the perfect strategy is gonna be probably a video every other day. But if I can get videos out like back to back, like days in a row, I will do that. Like I'm just gonna try and pump out as much. I want to make the videos more quality than just like pushing videos out to you every day. I don't want to do like 16 minute videos every day. I would rather have the videos be a wee bit longer, a wee bit more in depth. Watch me ramble a wee bit longer. But like I said, I appreciate all of the support. And like I said, guys, there will be more videos more often. And I do appreciate like everybody asking like when's the next video going to be. Because like you just want to watch the videos as much as I want to make them. And like I said, me going a wee bit more sort of full time in the content is going to make things a wee bit easier. But like I said, boys, before we drop off for today's video, remember, I do stream live over on Twitch. I also have two other YouTube channels. So if you want to check any of that our content out, everything is in the description down below. But boys, that is going to do it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, like, comment, subscribe. Only if you fucking want to on YouTube. Have yourselves a fantastic day.